Okay, so the next thing that we are going to discuss is what we call how to find out the limits in the case of a multivariate function. That's that's the idea which is a bit weird and a bit difficult. And you know very well how do we do in the case of a single variable calculus. So any idea when does the limit exist in the case of single variable? Left hand side is in the right. The limit from left. The function is defined. The function is defined. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, जरा मेरे को function आ जितना वो define आया मेरी right and left limit के point the equal आ तो ना point the function ये limit exists. Exists. That's very easy. Function is limit. Yes, the continuity. Yeah. Continuity. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
exist. So I think this is the function, what we call, is this? x divided by mod of x. Yes, sir. Because when we come from left, this thing becomes positive and this thing is negative, our value is minus 1. When we come from right, both are positive, our answer is going to be plus 1. And this is the derivative of the function mod of x. Do you agree with this thing? Yes, sir. Derivative. Derivative of the function mod of x is that. Mod of part minus mod of part minus. Last the term is the derivative is exist of this function. The I say it exists except except one point. Zero zero point. It exists except one point. That is zero. And I I call the derivative to be this function. Do you agree with that? At zero, it does not exist. I am talking about remaining point except zero. This is the derivative of this. How you find the derivative of this function? So formula x square plus formula y square. How you find the derivative of this function? Sin x square. Mod of sin x. It's not sin x. Mod of sin x. Mod of sin x. You know very well the derivative of sin x is cos x. The derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Cos x क्यों नहीं नहीं सही क्यों नहीं बोल रहे cos x क्यों नहीं तो अगर मार दो फार्मूला उनके साथ x square plus a square root में हम बाद में देखेंगे सांस। But you can do one thing, you can square both sides. Yes sir. Then this becomes y square is equal to sin square. Sin square. Because in a square you don't need any mod. Yes, now you differentiate it by using some sort of formulas for implicit functions. Yes. This would be 2y times dy by dx. This would be 2 yes, sin x times cos x. And then find the value of dy by dx. That's yes. all. So this is one of the tricks that you can apply when you have functions in mod. So you know very well that how can we define limits in the case of single variable calculus. And it is relatively very easy. You just check three conditions and that limit on the left exists and uh, limit on the right exists both and both limits are going to be equal. equal. Yeah. Then we say that the limit of that function at that particular point exists. Exist. How can we extend this particular thing to 3D? It is simply very much difficult to extend this thing. I think we see to separately check it at x axis and at y axis. So you claim that it from at x axis it exists and at, at y, axis, y axis it exists then it exists. They are both right left. So it means yes yes. yes yes. Yes. So we separately check in x axis and y axis. If both exist then we call that limit is exist at, yes. at x so and y. In single variable calculus you have curves like this. You take any single point Let's name it to be x0 on this xy plane. And what do you do? You check the limit from left and you check the limit from right. right. You don't have any other direction. Yes, sir. You check limit from left, you check limit from right, you are done. But now you have a surface like this. You are going to find the limit at a particular point that lies in this xy plane and you find the limit at this point <coughs> for this particular surface. You have this point x0, now you have point x0, y0 in this xy plane and you find the limit of this surface on that point. Now how many directions do you have? You have direction in this way, in this way. Basically you have infinite directions to reach at this particular point. This is the thing that we cannot extend <coughs> The idea of single variable calculus to that case. It is very much difficult. I am taking an example and you will see that why it is something that is difficult. So our function is xy divided by x square plus y square and we want this thing. Limit of this uh, multivariate function when x and y both tend to 
origin which is 0 0 so how do you do that So separately with respect to x and yes. with respect to y, if it is exist, then you thought the whole limit is so exist. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. You are saying that this thing exists, okay, agree. It means this direction and this direction. And, and, and how this direction and this direction. What about remaining directions? What about remaining directions? You have to check each and every direction, but the thing is that each and every direction is not possible to be checked because you have infinite directions. And you can do something else. And simply, in some sense, it is very much difficult to define these limits. But there are some ways you can find the limits algebraically, but it is very much difficult. Let us do this thing. First, what am I doing? I am taking the value of y to be 0. If you put y here to be 0, then what happens? Zero. So if y is equal to 0, what is the limit? You put it at 0, you put it at 0, this becomes 0 divided by x square is going to be 0. Now what am I doing? Limit of this function Now first I am putting the value of x to be 0, again this becomes 0. This is? So you see that if you put the value of x first or y first, your both answers are going to be same. But still there is some problem with this limit. And we claim that this limit does not exist. What do you do? You take different paths. You take a 2D plan. First what I did, I found this limit at y is equal to 0, taking x is equal to 0, you can say that you went on this path. Then you took this path, on these both paths, your limit is going to be 0. Now what am I doing? I am taking a different path. What is the equation for this line? The equation for this line is? y is equal to x. You put here y is equal to x, then find this limit and then check what happens. So y is equal to x. Put here, then this function becomes an x square. x square plus x square. Now find the limit as x goes to 0. So, x square upon 2x square simply becomes a constant, so our answer is 1 upon 2. Now I am just changing it to something else, I am finding the limit at this line, y is equal to minus x. You see one thing, what is the limit here? 0. What is the limit here? 1 upon 2. When we go in different way that limit... When you, when you take two different paths and the value of limit changes, it implies that limit of that multivariate function does not exist. This is the idea. Now what is the existence? That's very much difficult. But you can claim that it does not exist. It's very easy. So you take this path, now what happens? Minus 1 by 2 I think. So y is equal to minus x. You put here minus x, minus x times x, minus x square by, so limit x goes to 0. The answer is going to be minus one, right. minus one half. So when you don't see these things, just look at these two things. One limit is positive one half, another limit is negative one half. Negative one half. These two are different. It means the limit of this function yeah. as you go to this origin does not exist. But what is the generalized way to check it? Let me give you an idea for that, so that you may apply that and check these type of functions easily. Sometimes in our test... I am writing here x tends to 0. Why can't I write y is equal to 0? Because you are changing y to x. Now, there is a function that only depends upon x. The function only depends upon x. x and then your limit will be only x tends to 0. 
Okay, so let me give an idea that how can we do it without going in these all details. We get this type of question mostly. Limit z goes to zero, z bar divided by z in the sense of complex valued functions. Again, by applying the same analogy, this limit does not exist. Because when you take two different paths, the limit is going to be different, so the limit does not exist. So let me write a theorem, then I am going to tell you the way how we can do it. So we have a theorem that tells that if a function f of x comma y has two different limits, around two different paths as this point goes to x naught, y naught. So you are reaching from this point to this point but you are taking different paths and you are getting different limits then we say that limit of this function as x comma y goes to x naught comma y naught does not exist. So this is the theorem which shows that when does the limit not exist. But when does the limit exist, it is a different idea and something very much difficult. Okay, so first thing what we did, we took this path y is equal to 0, then we took this path x is equal to 0, we took this path y is equal to x, y is equal to minus x. Now what we are doing, we are taking a generalized path y is equal to mx. Generally, generally. Generally. Because when you don't do it, you will be stuck in lots of possibilities. So first you put x0 and y0, you got both things uh, equal, then you will claim that okay the limit exists, but this is not the case. You have to take different paths. And when does the limit not exist, this theorem guarantees that when you get two different answers. But suppose you take uh, you take five or six possibilities and for every possibility you are getting same answer, it does not mean the limit exists. Because existence of the limit is very much difficult, but to check whether it does not exist is very easy. So I am taking this, this generalized path and I am putting this value over here. Uh, what will it be? Y is equal to mx. mx times x is going to be? mx square divided by x square plus m square x square. What is the limit? x goes to 0. What you can do now? x goes to 0, x square common, 1 plus m square and this becomes a constant. So our answer is m plus m square. This is your limit along this path. Now the thing is that when you take different values of m and this value changes, the limit does not exist. You take different values of m and this answer, this your limit changes, it gives you different answers, then limit does not exist. But when this particular thing becomes a constant, whatever value of m you are going to substitute, you get a constant here. Let's say this whole answer becomes 2, 3 or some other constant. You say that limit exists. Because when you change the value of m, it will not affect this. Simply you say limit exists. Now you take different values of m and you get different answers. You will say that the limit does not exist. You take the value of m to be 1, this becomes 1 by 2. 
you take the value of m minus 1, this becomes minus 1 by 2. You say limit does not exist. So this is a good thing to check that whether limit exists or not in the case of a multivariate function. So for clone function behavior, उन्हें में या वाइज में में एक्सपोर्ट करें सो था या सर ये तो मतलब एक लाइन की थी या when when you want to find out the limit at origin because this y is equal to mx passes from origin when it is not origin then you can reflect you can translate this equation and you may apply another equation that is y minus y not equals m times x minus x not you can use it and y not and x not is going to be the point where you want to check the limit. You can apply that in that case. <coughs> so again, when you have different limits to be found in multivariate case, you will apply the same ideas. Like sometimes when, when you have no any undefined case in the denominator like zero, you will just put the values directly. I am writing those examples, you can do it by yourself. This is not for when limit exists. This we is when limit does path. not exist. We have a different path and getting the same answer. When you have two different paths, yes. and you have two different limits for two different paths, then limit does not exist. If you have two different paths, and we have but the limits are equal, mm -hmm. it does not guarantee that. It does not guarantee that. Okay, that's why I said it is very easy to check that whether limit does not exist, but checking existence is difficult. You can apply this thing, but again, this thing does not guarantee the overall idea. But when you change the value of m, this thing changes. When you get constant here, you can say that the limit exists. And this thing does not change. But it is the case when you are checking the limit at origin. And then in the case of origin, you can get this equation. You know very well that this equation passes through the origin. origin. This is the family of lines passes through the origin. Oh, homogeneity. Yes. Okay, limit. An example. Limit x y <coughs> tends to 1 comma 2. 3x square plus 1 divided by 2y. This is your function. How do you find this limit? This is generally defined. Just directly put the value on the Yes. Answer. You may put here the value directly. Because, so, no, no, no. yes. In no. denominator, you have y. And what is the value of y? It's 2. 2. That's one thing. Yes. So, directly you can put the value. What about this? It's 2, 3. No, no, it's different. Mm -hmm. x y square minus 3 y square plus 2 x minus 6 divided by 3 y minus. First, you have to check whether you can put the values directly or not. Exactly, can be direct put the Yes. Nothing is direct, nothing is Come, nothing why come. now what you can do? Sir. 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 I think you can factorize this. Cancellation. Then you can apply the limits. And sometimes, you know very well that we also use the process of rationalization in the limits. Sir, did you know that direct sir limit put can I am? I who I exist to think the I need one I as a function continuous on one. Yes. My friend, direct put the limit of my function actual continuous. Yes. But when you have one component in a function, you can apply this to this. 
we have this type of surface and what I need to do I have to find out the derivative at any point on the surface but how many directions for that to do we have like we can climb this particular surface in this direction in this direction in this direction so if I want to climb at a particular point from a given point let's leave from then I have multiple directions. So we call infinite directions. Yes, we have infinite directions. Okay. So, first of all, we restrict our attention to two directions. One is x, another is y. Then, if you want to go in any direction, then we define what we call directional derivative. So directional derivative is the derivative in any direction but when we find the derivative in x direction or in y direction we call this the partial derivative of a function x uh, of a function f in direction of x yes so what I do on this whole surface I take a particular curve <coughs> let's say this curve only goes in the direction of x. So we have a function f of x comma y. This particular function depends upon two variables. But what I do, I fix the value of y. It means I put the value of y to be a fixed value. Let's call it y naught. Now this function is a single variable function. How do you define limit on a single variable function? We know very well. Y is constant and yes. we, we apply limit. This is, this is the formula. Yes, this is the formula. So we are going to extend the same idea. We have a function. But how many inputs do we have? Two, two. two inputs. But one is constant. We have fixed Y. And we have fixed Y to be Y naught. You can see here. How many inputs do we have? Only one. How many inputs do we have? Only one. But here I have two inputs. Why not? Why not? I have fixed why not. Because I am going only in the direction of x. Only in x direction I want the slope of this particular curve at a fixed point where the value of y is going to be. Why not? That is fixed. So how can I find out the derivative? Simply you know very well. I put here x naught or simply x. X, x. x is going to be generalized, x naught is going to be fixed. fixed. And this is x plus x delta x. x naught plus h delta x or h. h. And their difference divided by h. h. And find the limit as h goes to 0. This is what we call the partial derivative of a function. I can call it partial f or partial z because my function is this with respect to x. But since I have specified the points, then I can say that the, my point is x naught y naught. If I am not specifying these points, then simply I can remove it. This will give me the derivative at any point. At any point. So this is how we define the partial derivative in the direction of yes. x. So, if you know this thing from single variable, simply you are going to generalize this case to multivariate case. And what about in the direction of... Similarly, the yes. y axis is similarly. So, d is y. And the limit extends to 0, x naught, y naught. What do you do here? F of the value of x is fixed. The value of x is fixed. fixed. The value of y here becomes y0 plus h and here it becomes y not. simply y0 not divided by h and as h goes to 0 we call it partial f by partial y at the point x0 y0. So this is the definition. But how do we find this? 
For example, if we have a function x cube by square and I want partial z by partial x so fuck and तो ते y x में चेंज नहीं तो क्यों नहीं टू y x क्यूब आई है ठीक में नहीं जो को आसो मतलब में इधर थ्री x स्क्वायर y स्क्वायर आई है ठीक में नहीं टू y x क्यूब टू y है ठीक है y में यस सेप डिफरेंस चलते हैं क्यों फिर y बार सेपरेटली बस तो ना रहता है सो दिस इज पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस z with respect to x, it means you will treat this thing to be constant. Yes, sir. Derivative of x cube is 3x square, x square and this thing remains same. And this is going to be? So, x cube is constant. x cube is same. This is going to be 2, 1. And similarly, you can differentiate these both functions again with respect to x or with respect to y. Yes, sir. And you can also see this thing that second partial of z with respect to first y then x is same as second partial of z first x then y. They are going to be equal in this case but they are not equal. function sir you on the Laplacian equation will be satisfied and the you equal to that. When there is a good function, continuous, then differentiable, then it will satisfy. It will satisfy this thing, but we can't say it's generally. Generally. But it is the when the function is good, it's continuous, it's differentiable, then it will satisfy yeah. this. Q I to algebraically you have to transcend the function the thing go. Yeah, K for this generally for all I have to learn. Yeah, that okay, sir. Then if Laplace and equation we satisfy, then do. Then sir, you equal to do. Then if not, then do the thing. But Laplace is conditional. Laplacian is the condition. Oh, Laplacian. It's called harmonic function. Yeah. How would it? Yeah. These are harmonic and Laplacian. Harmonic function is complex for some of you. Yes. So, if my second derivative is harmonic, I put it in the other direction. If I satisfy it, then I have the equality of the two. Or it is the reverse case. When this equality is true, then it satisfies Laplacian. I think you are going to change the direction. If the equality is true, then it satisfies Laplacian. I'm not sure, but there is a connection between them. There is a connection. There is a connection. Okay, so sometimes what happens that when we teach someone, the problem appears basically in this case. You have this function and you have this function. In this case, this y square is treated as a coefficient when you differentiate with respect to x. And coefficient always remains same. In this, y square is treated as a constant and the derivative of constant is 0. So here partial z by partial x would be 3x square only. 3x square only, yes. 3x square simply. And the derivative of y square is going to be 0. Because in this case, this is a constant. Yes, and in this case, this y square is a coefficient. So this is what we call the partial derivative. Yo, sir. Yes. That the derivative of uh, this function does not exist at origin. At origin. <coughs> the only reason is you will check that left and right limit will not be equal. Left limit would be plus, my, plus one or minus one and the right limit would be plus one. So when you find this limit, it is necessary to check left and right limit. But we do not do that usually. Yes, yes. Because you only find the function that is the derivative, but it is necessary. <coughs> we do this in these type of functions. Then the corner exists. Yes. Uh, like something like yes, yes. But it is necessary to check left and right. Left left check in the kind one. This one? Right. 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 Right.
any connection between these two ideas? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If a function that is a differentiable, then we call it is also a continuous. It must be continuous. If if a function is continuous, then we have not sure that it is it may be differentiable or not. So that's the connection between. So it means if a function is differentiable, <coughs> it means it is continuous. But, rever but reverse is not not true. Reverse is not true in general. In general, yes. Okay. In some cases, it might be. It might be true. Okay. So the connection is uh, differentiability implies <coughs> continuity. We know that thing. Continuity means may not be not. Yes. Uh, continuity, we know very well that uh, limit exists, Left, right, and, and function. the limit uh, at that particular point is same as the value of the function. function at that point. This thing exists, and this thing is equal to the value of the function. function yes, this is what we call continuity. continuity. Yes. There is another definition of a function to be continuous. In the case of the sequences and limits as well. E epsilon and delta. Yes, yes. And epsilon. epsilon and delta is there as well, but you can define continuity in sequences as well. There is another definition. So I call this these all the sequences are convergent implies these all the sequences are convergent. It means the limit of the uh, the the function is continuous at that particular point, whatever you choose here. So, uh, convergent sequences okay. implies convergent sequences of this type, then we can define so, continuity. So, sequence have a discrete point, then how can we say it is a continuous? Because we have a discrete we can, point. We can, because we can take the points closer and closer to each other. We can say it is there, we'll be doing in real analysis. Now, differentiability in simpler words means smoothness, the function is smooth, and if it has some sort of kinks, then it is not differentiable at that particular <coughs> point. So differentiability implies continuity, but the reverse is not true. But one thing is true, I think we take the contrapositive of this statement, it means if the function is not continuous, it implies it is not, not, different. not differentiable. It means this is a statement, and this is the Contrapositive of the statement. So, differentiability implies continuity, and uh, if the function is not continuous, it means simply it is not, not differentiable. Do we have such a case in partial derivatives? This is the main question. Do we have such a case in partial derivatives? That if the partial derivatives of a function exist and are continuous, then the function is continuous. Because we know very well, in the case of single variable calculus, differentiability means what? f prime of x naught. Yeah. Implies what? Implies continuity at <coughs> x naught. This is true. We know very well. But can this be applied to this case that partial of f with respect to x when they exist with respect to x and with respect to y at a particular point, whatever it is, does it imply continuity <coughs> of that function at x naught, y naught? So the thing is that it is not true in general. <coughs> generally, it's not true. Yes, generally, it's not true. It's true in the case of single variable calculus, but it is not generally true in the case of a multivariate function. Will you find the continuous now the Pobi differentiable? No, I mean to say when partials exist and partials are continuous, they exist. But this does not imply that the function is continuous. Continuity is a generalized definition. For example, you have a surface, whatever the structure of the surface is, you want to check the continuity, it means in this open disk, let's say R, the function is 
continuous in this open disk. Now what you do, you only define this partial x in a single direction and when you, you define this partial f partial y in a single direction. So on these two lines, in these two particular directions like y direction and x direction, the function and its derivatives might be continuous. But on the whole open region R, the function might be <coughs> discontinuous. Yes, yes, this is the thing. Partials give you only two directions. In the direction of x, in the direction of y. Okay, partials exist. It means in that direction the function is continuous. But continuity of a surface generally means continuity in some sort of disk, whether it is open or closed. So, it is not generally true. Yes, more pass. Yes, yes. Generally, it is not true that. Generally, it is not true. But when you define directional derivative, you always specify a particular direction. Again, you are not going in all the directions. So, I may give you one example. Sir, sir, the whole chorus is a fractional derivative. I am here. Fractional derivative. Sir, BS is a chorus. So, no, no, it is not in BS course. But if you have interest, then I can suggest you something. Have you started that course? No, no, no. If you have started, then I can uh, like suggest you something else. If you are like at the zero stage, then I can suggest you something else. It's a different <coughs> idea. We'll be discussing that thing. Yes. As I told you already that it is very much difficult even to define limits, to find limits, continuity. But there are some things that we can apply to be sure about some extent, not generally, not in a whole sense. So, yeah, study a region, you differentiability would have oh, okay. There are methods, we are coming to that. There are methods. So, I am just giving a counter example. Okay, that's the example which gives this thing, but this is counter example to the single variable calculus. You know, variable and single variable. Derivative exists, implies continuity. You have this example which is counter to this. A function which takes value 0 when the product of x and y is not 0. The function takes value 1 when the product of x and y is 0. So, what is the graph of this function? What is the value of this function? 0. The value of the function is 0. It means it is simply this, whole xy line. But the value of the function is 1. The value of the function is 1 when this is let's say 1. When the product of x and y is 0. The product of x and y is 0 when the value of either x is 0 or the value of, let's say, y is 0. It means this function is simply whole xy plane except these lines. Except these lines and this line over here and this line over here. Above these two lines, the value of the function is going to be exactly this one. So you can define the partial derivative of this function in the direction of y, in the direction of x. Yes. They both will exist, but you can see that the function is not itself continuous. I mean to say that at every point the value of the function is 0, at every point. But exactly at these x's, the value of the function is 1. Mm. This is that function. You, you can check these things. This is going to be 0, 
this is going to be zero it means they exist but the function is not continuous, continuous. continuous. the function is not continuous it can be easily checked 